Okay, hi everybody. Um, so thank you very much all for coming. Um, I can see that there's a few of you in attendance there. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to, um, to say hello to you all. Um, we're going to be talking today about the accounting and finance degrees um, that we offer here within the School of Business. Before we get started and before I share my screen with you, um, I'd just like to introduce myself and we're also lucky today that we've got um, two current students who are here um, to help me with the presentation and to give you a little bit more information as we go through. So we'll all say hello and introduce ourselves um, and then, you know, and then we'll get started with the main presentation. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so my name is um, Justin Hoff. I'm a lecturer um, with the university um, in accounting and finance. I suppose just a little bit about myself. Um, I actually came through the undergraduate system at the University of Dundee myself. I began my undergraduate degree in 2005 and I went through um, the, the exact same accounting course um, that we're going to be speaking about today. So I graduated in 2009 and um, went on to do a PhD again with the um, in the School of Business University of Dundee and I've basically been here ever since. So. Um, yeah, I feel like kind of part of the furniture of the university now. So I'm very used to how um, how the place operates. And as we kind of go through the presentation today, it's, um, you know, we'll try and highlight a lot about the actual degree for you as well, because um, it, it, it is and always has been an extremely good degree that we offer in accounting and finance. So hopefully that comes across. And if you have any questions as we go through, feel free to put them into the Q&A. Um, what we might do is we'll leave a little bit of time at the end of the presentation whereby I can then or myself and um, Harry and Helena can come and address some of those questions for you. So, um, yeah, feel free to ask any questions as we go along. OK, so um, I'll, I'll just sort of ask Harry um, to say hello now. So Harry's one of our current students that's going to be helping me today. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm Harry, as Justin said, Harry Davidson, if you want my surname as well. Uh, I'm a fourth year accountancy student uh, doing the BAC degree. A little bit about myself, uh, there's not much to say because obviously I'm still doing my degree, so that's about it. But yeah, I'm from Glasgow, uh, currently in Glasgow, not moved back up to Dundee just yet. And yeah, uh, looking forward to the session today. Hey, thank you very much, Harry. And we've got Helena as well. So Helena, do you want to just say a quick hello? and? Hi, yeah, I'm Helena Dryley. Um, I'm in third year, well, going into third year doing the BAC accountancy degree as well. Um, same as Harry, I'm still doing my degree, so there's not much else really. <laughs> um, but yeah, hope you enjoy. Yeah, thank you very much. And as I say, um, you know, so if you have any questions for myself um, or for Harry and Helena or all of us, you know, feel free to kind of ask um, as we go in the Q&A um, and we can address those. I suppose I should have said, you know, um, I'm not, you can probably tell I'm not from Dundee originally. Um, I'm actually from um, Liverpool originally, but I, I, as I say, I've been here since 2005. So, um, yeah, so it's um, I, I do I do really like Dundee um, as a city as well. So, OK, I'll get these um, slides shared then so we can make a start. Bear with me a second. So we should start to see those content appearing now. Kenza, are they being displayed on the screen there or? Oh, there we yes, go. Yes, you can see them. OK, brilliant. OK, fantastic. So so like I say, um, we're here to talk about the accounting and finance degrees, and there's actually three different degrees that we're going to be um, speaking about today. And what I'm actually going to do is, although I'm aware that you guys are kind of at the point where you're still deciding where about you're going, um, so I'm trying not to go too much into the real detail of within the course, but there are quite a few things that I do want to share with you as we go um, as we go through it in terms of the structure of the degree as well. So I've actually a couple of things that I'll share with you through the presentation. So as I said myself, my name's um, Dr. Justin Hoff um, and I'm a lecturer and also the admissions officer for accounting and finance. Um, we've been introduced to Harry and Helena already. Um, as I say, Harry's just about to go into level four, so he's in his final year, and Helena just about to go into level three. In the picture there, you can see myself, um, and the gentleman standing to my left is um, David Morrison. He's actually, um, he, he works in a local tax, um, tax firm and comes in every year to give us a session 
for the students when we're delivering tax material. So um, yeah, no, no David quite well. Hopefully he'll be in again speaking to the students this year. Um, and next to David, we've got um, Gwen Hanna and Elaine Taylor, who are both um, have been lecturers in the university as well. So um, that's who you can see there. Before we kind of get into speaking about all of the course um, and, you know, explaining about how we structure things within accounting and finance, I just want to talk a little bit about um, the, the city of Dundee um, and the costs and the campus, because these are all really important considerations. So it may be that um, some of you attending today are local. Um, you could be, say, like Harry from Scotland. There may even be people here that are from outside of Scotland. Um, the city itself, so as I say, I, I come from Liverpool originally, um, and Liverpool is really quite a big city. Dundee's not quite um, as big a city as Liverpool, but I really took to Dundee as soon as I came here because I found that it was big enough so that you've got everything that you need, but also not too big. Um, so it is a really, really nice city, and it's really picturesque as well. You can see in the picture there, you've got the... Um, you've got the Tay Bridge that goes across from Dundee to Newport. Um, and there's loads of places. I've actually really got into my um, walking over the last couple of years. And it's really, really central, I feel, Dundee. You've got the mountains all around you. And you're also, um, you're not very far from the really big cities of like Edinburgh and Glasgow as well. Um, so it's ideally located. It's a lovely place, Dundee. And in terms of cost, um, you may be interested to know, obviously it does, you know, if you if you move and decide to come and live in Dundee while you study here. In the first year, we've got um, halls of residences. So, and they're actually located right on the campus. So it's really convenient for you. A lot of students tend to come in and they'll stay within these halls in the first year. And then in the second year, you would tend to get private accommodation. So it's actually, um, it's up to 40% cheaper than the likes of say Edinburgh, um, for private accommodation in Dundee. And in terms of the national average in Scotland, Dundee is actually 25% cheaper. So it is a reasonably priced place to come and stay. And even when you get into your second year and you move, say, out of the halls of residence that are on campus, um, the, the West End is, is really close to where the university is located. And you've got Perth Road and there's a lot of student accommodation, which is really, really ni nice places to stay around about. So everything's on your doorstep right the way through. One of the most unique points that we actually have at the University of Dundee is the campus itself. So what you find is a lot of universities will have um, campus buildings dotted all around about the city. So we're quite lucky in, in Dundee that we've got our campuses all in one location. So literally when you come for your first class, you know, it takes a matter of minutes to walk across the campus to the various different classes. So that makes it a really unique place to come and study. And you've even got the um, the student union, which is on the campus. So a lot of you will all be really glad to know that that's um, nice and close. And they actually even offer for, you know, for when you kind of go out, uh, go out and have a night out in the students union. I believe there is actually a night bus that they offer as well, which kind of, so even when you move off the campus and say you go and rent a flat around about, you know, they'll actually still make sure um, you know, that you can get home OK. So and this is really quite reassuring for parents as well, because it can be a little bit daunting the first time that you kind of move away from home and come to university. And the fact that they've got all this, they really pay a lot of attention to make sure that they look after you while they're here. Um, I know that Harry and Helena um, are in. Um, am I right in saying, Harry, you so you, you live in Glasgow and so you come and stay in Dundee, do you? Yeah, uh, so obviously I'm from Glasgow, so I rent like pro well now privately rent in Dundee and have been for this will be now my third year doing so. Uh, it is a great pra place to live, like Justin said. It's not too big or too small. It's quite handy, especially on a night out since clubs and all that are all opening back up. You can go to any club you like and it's just a it's a walk home. It's not like a £15 taxi, £20 taxi or anything you could, like in Glasgow or Edinburgh. So it's quite helpful in that sense. Uh, for costs for actual accommodation, I think on average over the past three years, I've only played, I've paid £350 per month. That's rent and bills included, which is very cheap. You may think it's quite a lot, 
still at school, like maybe at college or that, like living at home, trust me, compared to Edinburgh, Glasgow, and especially St Andrews, that is a lot cheaper. And it's it's a big weight off your shoulders when you're able to like save that wee bit of money or spend it elsewhere, going out, partying, doing what you want to do with it, you know. But yeah, de bought. definitely. Exactly, the essentials, Justin. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a great place and I I'm, was just like yourselves. I just came one day to an open day, sadly. It was more in person. It wasn't online. And I just came to Dundee. had never been to Dundee in my whole entire life. And just came one day and fell in love with the city and literally went home that day and accepted my offer and was like, I'm going to Dundee. Bye, mum and dad, I'm off. <laughs> How about yourself then, Helena? So do you, um, do you, 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 you don't live in Dundee yourself, do you, Helena? Yeah, that's right. I don't live in Dundee. I actually commute to Dundee from Fife, um, me and another girl just from really round the corner, basically. So yeah, it's been like a really good experience, actually. We were kind of nervous commuting to begin with and we kind of didn't know what to do, how to do it. But kind of after like a week or two, it's like you're veterans, you know exactly what you're doing, where you're parking, whether you're getting the bus or not, if you're going out that night, if you're getting the train home in the morning, like, but yeah, definitely. I was the exact same as Harry. I wasn't really in Dundee that often as a kid um, and I just came to an open day like you are right now, um, also on campus um, and I just fell in love and I was like, yeah, that's where I'm going and exact same as me. I just went home, accepted the offer and that was it. Like, I'm now here. I don't know how I'm going a third year already, but we're here. It does. You know, I remember the same myself. It, the time just goes so quickly. It really does, you know. Um, but yeah, it's um, no, I, I was I was the same as Harry and Helena. Once I kind of came um, and saw the city and everything and saw the place, I, I, I fell in love with it as well. And um, I suppose for me, like I said, I've done a lot of walking recently. It's only probably in the last, although I've been in Dundee now 15, 16 years, it's probably only in, in the last three or four years that I've really appreciated just how, um, you know, because you've got the city, but so remote as well. Um, and there's, you know, so many things that you can do, go and do round about. And obviously we've got the VA Museum now as well. Um, and the actual Dundee itself, the city's really been developed quite a lot over the last couple of years. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful city. Um, so yeah, highly recommend that if you're not, you may all be from Dundee. Um, but you know, if you're not, I highly recommend that you come and see the place and the campus itself as well. Um, if you get the chance to do a campus tour, it's a lovely campus. OK, so for the remainder of the session, I am going to focus more on the course um, and career prospects as well. So um, without maybe going into too much detail, because I know that at the moment, you know, you're kind of just starting to explore these things. But um, so we'll tell you a little bit about them. Um, the three main degrees that we offer um, within accounting and finance is the Bachelor of Accountancy um, or the BIAC, as it's known. We've also got the Bachelor of Finance and the Bachelor of International Finance. Now, broadly speaking, the difference between um, the degrees there, the Bachelor of Accountancy is, um, well, as it says in the title, the main focus is really accounting and finance. It's a mix. Um, and this is what is, it, it's one of our, it's a highly accredited degree. I'm going to speak to you a little bit more about that um, in a few minutes. But Broadly speaking, the difference between, say, the Bachelor of Accountancy and the Bachelor of Finance or International Finance is that you've got slightly more economics and finance focus within the Bachelor of Finance and the Bachelor of International Finance. Whereas the Bachelor of Accountancy, it's a, it's a mix. So you do things like auditing, taxation, management accounting, um, financial accounting. You also do elements of finance as well. So. I suppose from seeing the structure, it really depends what you kind of feel um, you may want to go on and do um, upon completing your degree. The one good thing that we have is um, within the first year of your studies, the degrees are pretty similar. So there are slight differences, but broadly speaking, the modules that you undertake within level one are pretty similar across the three programs. So we do actually have flexibility for you to transfer between the BIAC and the BFIN at the end of the first year. So, for example, if you came in and did the BFIN, um, you know, you could maybe transfer onto the BIAC if you felt that you were preferring, say, the more accounting side. If you came in doing the BIAC, you could then say, well, actually, it's really the finance side of things that I enjoy doing. So you could then maybe transfer onto the BFIN there. So we do have that flexibility at the end of the first year. Once you get beyond the first year, 
that becomes a lot more problematic because um, the degrees are kind of shaped like if you imagine like a pyramid, they start off quite broad and then they become quite focused as you progress through the years. So once you've kind of gone past the first year, you start to focus on a lot more degree specific topics. Um, so it does become a little bit more difficult to then transfer after that. But you can kind of get that experience of the modules as you come in and then decide that you want to um, maybe switch over at the end of the, um, the first year. OK, so in terms of the actual teaching, um, as with um, a lot of places, we have our main lectures which will be delivered to the whole class. So this will be where you have um, your main sort of topics delivered. So if I give you an example, let's say in management accounting, one of the topics that we cover there would be, say, stock valuation. So we would deliver that, um, that would deliver that content within a main lecture to the entire class. What we would then have it was we would have smaller tutorial groups. So the class would be broken down. Say, for example, there was 60 students in a class. They may be broken down into two or three smaller tutorial groups. And the idea of the tutorial groups is we would then give you questions um, based on the main lecture material. So it gives you that practical experience of going through worked examples. And again, the reason we have smaller groups there is so that we can give you more individual attention within um, the tutorial sessions. In some modules, what we then have is we will have computer lab sessions. So in fact, relatively recently, we actually had some new developments within um, one of our information system modules. And it was in actually direct response to what employers were um, sort of suggesting that people needed more of. So we've actually developed new Excel labs within our sessions. So you get the chance to kind of sit and learn how to construct spreadsheets in Excel, how to use different types of formula and things like that. And the idea is the whole thing is kind of building up towards your employability when you finish your degree um, at the end. Obviously, with the impact that um, the coronavirus has had, we have gone more into this blended learning at the moment. Um, so there's a mix of kind of online classes um, and also um, face to face classes. So coming into this academic year starting now, we are still going to have some online offerings, but we, we, you know, we're obviously getting back more into that face to face sessions. So the tutorials will be happening in a face to face environment with the some of the large online le you know, lectures still being online. But with a bit of luck, as we go into the next half of this academic year and indeed the following year, all being well, we'll be able to get back to the normal operation of face to face classes. What we have tried to do as well, because a lot of our degrees are really kind of geared up on employability. Um, and in actual fact, I'll talk more about this towards the end as well. The employability rate that we have um, through the BIAT degree is actually really high. It's like 95%. And I think, I think I can safely say pretty much all of the current fourth years who have left the university actually now have employment. Um, so we have an extremely high employability rate and that's largely due to how the degree is shaped, which I'll show you more of in a second. But part of that is what we have is we have a lot of industry lectures. Um, so we'll have, say, people come in to give sessions for the students from local accounting firms. It can sometimes even be larger accounting firms as well. Um, as part of my own tax classes, I had um, Elaine Lorimer, who was part of the um, Revenue Scotland, she came in to give a session to our tax students a couple of years ago. So we try to give you as much experience and engagement with local firms and industry as possible throughout your degree. It's not just so that you can get ideas of um, the type of things that they do, but it's also a really great experience to get students to network as they go through the degrees. Um, that's an invaluable thing um, to try to do as you go through university. The more people that you get to know, the better it is, not just for your own degree, but also for knowing what you want to go on and do afterwards. Um, so we, we try to engage with employers and local firms as much as possible right through all of the modules. You also have the opportunity to do an international exchange. Now, this would tend to be done in the second year. Um, now, it says European or transatlant transatlantic. It tends to be the main places are things like um, America or Australia. 
So tend to be more transatlantic at the moment. Um, but we, we do have European offerings as well. And what you would tend to do is that you would um, you would apply for that during the first year of your studies. So it's another option and it can be really can look really good on the CV. Um, the fact that you've gone to do a semester or sometimes two semesters in the second year within a university, um, say in America or Australia. And you actually even have the option of doing a European language in your honours years. So you could say, go into the third year and you can do um, Spanish or French, I believe. So and that becomes part of your degree. And again, it's something that can look really good um, on your CVs. I suppose at this point I could ask maybe, um, Helena, did you take or are you thinking of doing a language going into third year or did you do the exchange or anything? Um, no, so neither. Um, and my main reason you've not really got onto this part yet is accreditation. Um, so yeah, I kind of did think about it, but I I thought I, I should stick just with the accounting. Um, I know quite a few people that have done the um, exchanges or were planning on. I don't know if that actually happened because of COVID, but yeah, I personally didn't do either of those just for the accreditation purposes, really. Yeah, it does. It can have an impact on the accreditation. I'm going to talk more about that um, in the next slide. How about yourself, Harry? Did you um, take uh, any of those options? For the exchange, I was planning on doing one. Uh, I thought it'd be a great thing, a great thing to put on your CV and build your own brand, being like, I went and studied abroad. Uh, but when I was looking at places, obviously, because you can't go everywhere in the world, you can't like pick your one university and go there. There's obviously only like certain ones you can go to, depends on availability in the university. And I just think it was the ones that were there. I was just like, oh, I don't, don't know if I'd want to go there and study for a year. It was like I was looking up in one of the countries that like English wasn't very well spoke, not very well spoken, but just like it wasn't very uh, English spoken. I'm muddling up my words here. It just they didn't speak English a lot over in that country. So I was just like, I don't know if I'd go over there and I only wanted to go over for a semester and that was the only one available. Uh, so I was just like, oh, nah, I'm going to leave it. And thankfully I did because COVID obviously struck literally a couple months into that second semester so thankfully I didn't go and I wasn't stranded over there but yeah I didn't I didn't think about taking a language either due to as Helena said it kind of knocks you back in the accreditation side yeah you, you do it does mean you know with these type of things like the language can look fantastic on a CV it really can but it does have an impact on the accreditation I'll talk a little bit more about that um in the next slide so that I, I think that's another thing actually ju just on the accreditation it, it's a really good at this stage that to try to get an understanding of what that means particularly when it comes to accounting you know but um but yeah we'll speak about that in a second so we do have these options and it's really good in terms of the international exchange as harry mentioned that it's not something that's open to everybody um it is by application so we do have a limited number of places and it does kind of depend on the universities because obviously we have students from there coming over here and we get some of our students that go over there so again it can look fantastic on your cv so it's certainly an option that you could consider um when you come to study with us okay a little bit about um Actually, before I go on to this, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just share a screen which shows you the structure of the degree. So um, I'll just wait until that comes up on the screen there. It should do in a second. OK, hold on a second. Let me just stop sharing that there and then we'll try and get this other screen up. OK, I think it's this one. Let me see. There we go. OK, so hopefully you can all see this. Now, this is something that I'd actually put together myself and it's just so that to help you try and understand how the degree works. So this is an example of the BIAC degree. And you can see here that what we've got is we've got um, it is a very structured degree. So in the first year, what you would come in, you would come and you would do three modules in semester one, which is from September to Christmas. And that would be introductory financial accounting, business information systems and international business environment. What you would then have is you would then have the exams for this would take place just before Christmas. You would come back in January for the second semester 
and you do introductory management accounting, statistics and foundations of economic analysis. Then when you go to semester two, um, you have your summer break and then semester two in level, uh, sorry, level two is structured broadly speaking in the same way, but with a different set of modules. So you've then got intermediate financial accounting, management information systems. That's actually a new module which has been developed this year. Um, financial decision analysis, then in semester two, management accounting, intermediate financial management and business law. What you then notice is when we get to level three, the structure change, changes slightly. So instead of having just three modules, you would then have four modules in semester one and four modules in semester two. Now we spoke about accreditation, so I'll explain a little bit about that here and then a bit more on the next couple of slides. So accreditation is something that when when you're training to be an accountant, OK, once you actually go through university, upon completion, um, you would then look to get a graduate position. Now, once you've obtained the graduate position, in order to practice as an accountant, you have to then have, as well as university degree, you need to have professional qualifications. Um, so what you would then do is some of the say professional bodies would be um, ICAS, which is the Institute Chartered Accountants of Scotland. Um, or you could have, for example, um, if it was England and Wales, it would be ICAEW. And these guys are who you kind of train with um, professionally once you've completed your degree. Now, the good thing about the program that we offer at the University of Dundee, you can see here that for the first three years, it's very structured. There's very, in fact, you actually don't really have any choice. These are the modules that you take. Now, the reason for that is because what we offer by coming through this, um, the BIAC program, you're able to get exemptions from these professional qualifications. Now, that's not just good for yourself. It's also good for potential employers because it means that once you go on to, say, um, get your graduate role, you've got exemptions from a number of these professional exams because of the content that you've studied at university. So for potential employers, it means that they don't have to put you through as many of the exams. So the way it works is um, I'll give you an example of let's look at financial accounting. So in level one, you do introductory financial accounting. At level two, you do intermediate financial accounting. And at level three, you do advanced financial accounting. And by taking all three of these modules and passing these three modules, what you would then do is you would then get an exemption from the financial management professional qualification or professional exam. So you then wouldn't need to sit that as a professional exam. OK, and that's the same thing we can look at um, management accounting. So we've got introductory management accounting, um, intermediate management accounting. So I'm on the wrong one, intermediate management accounting. And then we've got advanced management accounting as well. So what it's basically showing is that the management accounting professional qualification is split across these three modules. Now, so as I say, you take all three, you pass all three, you then exempt from the professional exam that you need to sit for that level of management accounting. Now, another good thing that that means is within this degree, it means that the content that we're teaching you within these modules is current and up to date for what professional bodies require them. So it also means that upon completing the degree, not only do you have this knowledge in accounting in all areas of finance and taxation and things as well, but that that knowledge is up to date and current. So again, it's really attractive to potential employers. And, you know, you can see, for example, taxation, um, you know, you also get the exemption for taxation here and that comes from taxation and in the fourth year fiscal studies as well. So it's only when we get to level four that you're actually able to start choosing option modules. So Levels one to three are very structured. When you get to level four, you can then say to yourself, well, OK, I would like to maybe signal to an employer a particular area that I'm interested in. So you might then say, well, OK, I really like finance. So within level four, you could then say, OK, I may be going to choose to do, um, say, financial statements and analysis. OK, as one option here, you could do portfolio management, OK, security analysis. 
And that would then indicate to an employer that you've got this really broad um, knowledge of accounting and finance, and you're also, you're wanting to focus more in the area of finance. In the same way, you could come and say, okay, I, I, accounting was really where I wanted to focus. So you could come in in the fourth year. You could signal that by choosing, say, corporate governance, accounting in the public sector, um, maybe business, um, say, contemporary accounting issues, international reporting, things like that. So although it's very structured in the early levels, we do then offer you options in the fourth year where you can then kind of signal the kind of areas that you want to go into. So I know that's quite a lot to take in. Um, and I suppose just, Harry, you're going into your level four at the moment. Can you remember what you chose in terms of your option modules coming into this year? I think I know. Yeah, I think I, I think I roughly remember. It's been a while since I, I chose them. Uh, I think I've kind of went down the more finance route. So I've chosen uh, security analysis, portfolio management, social responsibility, fiscal studies, financial statement analysis, corporate corporate restructuring and finance, corporate governance, and contemporary issues in international reporting. Right, Pretty okay, sure. yeah, so you've got a good mix of finance modules in there, yeah. Yeah, work to my yeah. strengths. Well, I think this is the thing. It, it it really allows you to then kind of signal further. You know, by that point, I will say by the end of level three, you've obtained all the possible exemptions that you could get um, in terms of the accreditation. Um, I'm a little bit conscious of time. So what I'll do is I'll move back to the slides. Um, let me just share that screen again. Um, and then what we'll do is I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. Um, what I wanted to say before we go on to that, you know, one Sorry, really teacher. important thing here is, the, and this is what I found when I came to join the University of Dundee as well, it's what really attracted me to, in particular, the area of accounting and finance. A lot of the members of staff that teach you, um, not only are experts in the modules that they're teaching you, but they're actually, some of them are professionally qualified themselves, or they actually, um, they, they research and undertake, you know, they public, they, they produce publications within their specific area of expertise. So, for example, you know, if they if they teach in the area of finance, they will also tend to publish in the area of finance. So we've got a, um, you know, a lot of expertise within the staff that actually teach you there as well, which makes it really attractive. In terms of student support, um, one thing to say that I've already mentioned about the industry engagement. But what's really important is we actually, and we encourage this from all of our students, we want to have students involved with academic representation. So we have a lot of staff student committees. Now, the idea of these things are that you're able to put your own voice into the degree programmes. So we frequently meet with um, the representation from within the school and the student side, and we find out as academics, OK, what's been working, what hasn't been working, you know, um, is there anything that you feel could be improved? Every member, every student that comes in will have a dedicated advisor to studies. Um, so, for example, I'm advisor to a lot of students within um, the university and they will come to me as first years. So if you guys joined the university, when you arrive, you get assigned adv an advisor to studies and, you know, it's a really good way to get to know a particular member of staff. And I always take my advisees out for coffee and things. and what we what basically build up a build up a knowledge of them as we go as they go through university so you really take an interest in their own studies and at the end of the degree you know i would any of my advisees come to me and say oh you know what can you give me a reference for a job and and i would write that personally so there's a there's a and i i really enjoyed this as a student we've got that real personal touch with the students that we know um so that's another thing that's really good about the um the School of Business. We also have, and this is only in the last year or two, we've got a dedicated careers and employment engagement officer specific to the School of Business. So in terms of the careers officer, we've got somebody that you can always go and speak to for help with a CV. Um, you know, the employing, employment engagement officer ensures that we, we have industry speakers coming into our modules all the time. So again, the focus is on making sure that um, you get the best out of the degree, um, that you've got the best CV for when you finish, and also that you've got that kind of 
um, integration with um, local industry as you go through. We also have an open door policy, a bit, little bit more difficult at the moment because we've been doing everything virtually. Um, at the moment, we could call it an open email policy, you know, so when we're in campus, you know, I, I am often, you know, people will come and knock on my door and and again, this is something that I really noticed as I went through the degree myself. It's it's really quite refreshing, you know, how um, how easy that can be to, to go and speak to members of staff if you need to. Um, and that's something that, you know, it's I found as a student really helpful. The final thing to mention that is this in-house induction program. You maybe think, well, why is that um, such a big thing? As a member of staff, the one thing that I would encourage is that you really try to get to know as many people within the course as possible. And this in-house induction program is a great way to do that because it allows you to get to know not just the staff, but also your fellow students. Um, and I'm, I'm going to come to Harry and Helena in a second on this as well. But one thing that you'll know is as you go through university, you spend a lot of time studying and you'll get to points where you know, maybe there's something that you don't understand or you're getting to your exam times and you're spending a lot of time in the library studying. The more people that you know, the more you can bounce ideas off um, and speak to people about these things. And I found that as a student invaluable um, throughout my degree. I don't know what you guys thought of that. Harry, what do you think? I mean, because you, you probably will have went through the same induction program that I did. It's something that you do as you come into first year, you know? Yeah, so like the first day induction, I think it was with Gwen that you said yourself had, Justin, and you were, got an egg in a paper airplane and you had to try and launch it or it was a paper rocket. You got put into teams and you had to launch it like as far as you possibly could without the like egg cracking. And then you had like all the people coming up and just trying to absolutely launch it miles and then the egg smashing to pieces. But yeah, it's... It, you, you don't think much of it, but then like I'd say like a week or two after if you actually I now look back on that like day, couple of days, and I think the people that I spoke to most in those days are now like my best mates in university. All all the time, like you'll sit beside them. So like it's a very crucial three days. Like I'm not saying like you won't like talk to people or anything if you don't talk to people then. But uh, definitely it's a opportunity to make like lifelong friends or like university friends etc and it's definitely something you should go on with an open mind to and just n nothing to lose really like just be yourself yeah i think you'll probably say the same helena as well take it do you uh, do you still know people from your open induction day and the in-house induction helena yeah definitely um they're pr probably as well some of like my best friends still like to this day it's weird you kind of go in thinking like why am i making a rocket for an egg like i'm too cool for this i've just started university like come on why am i doing this but like yeah honestly looking back like the people that i spoke to then like are like my closest friends still now yeah no it's and i think that's something that's really good and I, as i say i know the same from um as a student myself so i think what i'm trying to say here overall is that as well as making sure that you guys engage with industry speakers and things and and that you know it, it it's there's a big focus here about making sure that we develop you all the way through and that you've got the best support mechanisms in place um okay just very quickly i'll go on um this is just really to show you. So Yvette Mearns, she was um, she was actually um, a previous student and come, used to come in from time to time to speak to students. And um, she got a job in a local firm, EY Accounting, and used to come and tell students a little bit about what she does and give a session for us. And I mentioned at the start about Elaine Lorimer. Um, she came in, she was Chief Executive of Revenue Scotland. So this was in one of my tax classes. You can see me um, in the background there. So. And it's just to really kind of illustrate that we have these people coming in to speak to you all the time and it's really beneficial um, for you going forward and a great way to network. Just going back to the accreditation, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I am conscious that we don't have a lot of time left and I want to see if you guys have got any questions. So this is just an example of some of the professional bodies that we have the accreditation for. And as the, um, in terms of the BIAC degree itself, what I can say is we've got as much accreditation as any university in the UK, okay? So nobody has more accreditation than we do. Um, you get full accreditation for ACCA, full accreditation for ICAS, um, 
I think even it's full for ICAW. But um, for example, the likes of SEMA tends to be done on a module by module basis because that's more management accounting. But what I would say is um, it's really good to be aware of this quite early on. So, you know, make sure that you kind of um, ha look into it because once you actually, um, if you want to practice as an accountant or in auditing or in finance, professional accreditation is a really important part of that. And just to illustrate that, I've got an example here of the, um, of the ICAS accreditation, okay? And what this shows you is in order to be fully professionally qualified, you need to complete exams in all of these tests of competence, which is financial accounting, finance, business acumen, um, assurance and reporting, tax, management information systems. And then you've got the tests of professional skills. And finally, you've got these tests of professional expertise. Now, normally, if you go through an undergraduate degree, upon completion, you would have to go and complete exams in all of these areas. But by doing the BIAC degree, you guys actually get exemptions for all of these areas within number one here. So you effectively miss all of these exams and you're able to go to an employer and say, actually, I've already passed these through my degree. So the employer knows straight away they've only got to put you through number two and number three. What we'll do is I was going to ask Harry and Helena a little bit about this, but we'll go through the rest of the slides because I'm going to focus more a little bit away from um, the kind of serious academic side of things now and talk a little bit more about kind of the social side and other things. So we have this um, thing set up within the university, which is known as academic parenting. So um, obviously this is something that's been in the university for a while and it's where kind of the older students help out the younger students. And I'm going to ask Harry to talk a little bit about this for um, just for a minute or so here. So just to tell you a little bit about what it's about. Yeah, so it's quite, it's just as it says in the name, academic parenting is when people from like the year above it. So used would be coming in as first years. It could be someone in second year, third year or fourth year would be technically your academic parent. And you would like, it's a great way to socialise, like make friends in different years. Like say you're quite a timid, shy person, they'll like, introduce you to their friends that then would have, they'd have their own kids as well. They're academic kids, not actually kids. And then they would like, introduce you to them and then you can like make friends. And it's a great way to like build relationships and stuff. Uh, it also, it says there in the slide, it helps you for a support tool when you're like having troubles with your studies etc so when it gets to exam time and say you're struggling with say introductory to financial accounting and say you have a parent in second year who done that in the previous year you just send them a wee message being like can you help me I'm, I'm, I'm stuck with this and I'm sure that they'd be very much happy to help I've had a kid who's now going into third year not an actual kid again uh, but going into third year and he's he just messages me sometimes when he's like stuck around exam time like oh Harry could you show me how to like do this like I'm a bit I'm a bit stuck in it I just I just help him because that's the whole point of the whole program it's to, it's a support as a support a support tool for the younger students so yeah I'm passing it on to Helena I think she's going to talk about uh, the societies next yeah so and again just to kind of reiterate i think all of these things here it's really really good support mechanisms and it's something that i myself would, would you know encourage you to get involved with as well if you do come to the university of dundee we also have a lot of societies um and again these things are great for you guys to get involved with um so i'll, I'll let helena talk a little bit more about that you know yeah perfect um so i'm part of the dundee university business society or dubs um I joined Dubs in first year at a freshers fair. I'm not sure like what the script is with freshers fairs and things with you guys coming up. I don't know, virtual or if you'll get one in real life, who knows? Um, but yeah, at my freshers fair in first year, we kind of went around all the stalls. I joined up for Dubs. Um, and then since that, they um, arranged the academic parent in. So in first year, I was a child. And then now I've got my own kid as well. I've actually got two kids. Um, and yeah, they do like annual balls, trips, um, which I think is coming up later, so I won't ruin that part. Um, but yeah, it's just a great way to like make friends. There's even societies that have absolutely nothing to do with business. There's like a tea society, 
um, just so random and it's like you can just make friends through your like mutual interests so they're great yeah and i think as well y y um, these things to get involved with they also look fantastic on your cv as well so um i think it's a really really good thing and again i'm going to go on talk a little bit more about how you what you guys should be thinking about in order to succeed i am conscious of time here so um I noticed just to say, I know that if anybody does have any questions, please put them in the Q&A as we go. I've noticed there hasn't been anything coming up yet. So, um, but yeah, if you do have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A and I'll address them at the end. Um, we've got loads of social events. As Helena just mentioned though, we do have the annual ball and these things are arranged via the, um, the uh, societies. So we have this annual student ball um, and it's not just students that go to it. OK, so you do. It's the one time of the actually there's probably quite a lot of times of the year that you get to laugh at members of staff, um, but this is certainly one of them. So you can see here in the top right corner, um, you've got uh, myself there, second on the top row, second from the right. Um, and then you've got Professor Power, OK, another um, well established member of staff and underneath Professor Power, and um, that is Dr. Cordina, again, another member of staff that I work with. So and this was at one of the balls. I think am I right in saying we were up in Aviemore? This one, I think it was. Um, so they're dotted around in different places, but they're a really good kind of way, not just to um, associate with all of the students, but also, as I say, we do get members of staff coming as well. So they're always a good laugh. Um, yeah, and this is arranged through the society. One thing, and Harry's going to be able to get involved with this this year, um, we do have, it didn't happen last year, but with a bit of luck, it will this year. So we've got an annual um, London trip that happens, and it's for fourth year students, but it's really good. And I went on it myself as a student. You get to go to places like Standard & Poor's Bond Rating Agency, the Bank of England, Barclays Investment Bank and you go down, you stay overnight and it's a really, really good way of seeing how these business operate. And again, it's you know great for networking to get to know people um, and it can give you an idea about maybe what you want to go on and do upon completing the degree. So again, you know, just kind of reiterating and we do have a lot of focus on making sure that you get the best knowledge to go on and do what you want to do afterwards. So what i would sort of say is whether you decide to come and we really hope that you decide to come to the university of dundee and come and study accounting or finance with us but whatever it is that you do do um you know try to think about how to enhance your profile as you go through university so it's not just about attending lectures attending tutorials you know even today you know harry and helena helping out doing this kind of talk and things it's all things that enhance your cv you know, trying to get a relevant summer job or internship, um, joining a club or society, taking a position of responsibility, like within um, a society as a treasurer, a secretary, um, attending the different employability sessions. Um, I mean, I'll maybe just very quickly in the last minute, just say, Harry, you had an internship over the summer? Yeah, um, I had an internship with PwC. You might know them as Price Waterhouse Coopers. Uh, yeah, so it's a six week internship with them in their consulting line of service. So not very much related to accounts, but it's kind of made me realise that I'd like to stick to accounts and probably go for a, a future career in there. So yeah, it, it's very good. As Justin said, it's very relevant experience uh, that you can get during your time at university and also builds your brand and it makes you stand out compared to other students. Yeah, I'd say that's really important. That's it. It's really important to think about your CVs as you go through, you know? Um, and I know, Helena, you're probably going to be looking at something going in um, at the end of this year, between third and fourth year. Yeah, that's right. Most um, internships are kind of more geared towards people in their third year of university, but even not even a relevant job, if you even just have a job that you can use like transferable skills, um, for yeah, for employment in general, then it's good. It's great to have. Yeah, so and I think um, so we've got um, just to kind of wrap everything up then um, a lot of areas that you can go into. OK, you can see some of there. We've got people that go into commercial banking, financial management, accountancy, um, fund management and some of the kind of key employers that we have people going into. Um, 
things like RBS, um, NHS, PwC, KPMG. So, and like I said, one of the key things is that the employability um, level is really, um, I mean, as I say, it's about 95%. And knowing all the fourth years that left last year, um, I think, you know, the majority, um, everybody that I spoke to has already currently employed in a graduate position or has gone on to do further postgraduate study. So, yeah, um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Like I say, if you have any questions about the degree or if you want to ask Harry or Helena or anything, um, I know that it's just gone 10 to, so I'll stop there. But if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. Um, I don't think you guys are able to actually put your microphones on. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions. And thank you all very much. I can pop my camera back on now because I'm going to stop sharing that. OK. But yeah, and as I say, you know, hopefully you um, good luck with everything and hopefully I'll see you in person um, when you can come into the university, you know.